Soundhound AI is a stock that I believe is set up to really, really benefit from this trend in AI that we're seeing over the coming years, over really the coming decades. I think this stock will be a long-term winner within the AI space. And I'll go over that long-term um, opportunity for this stock in a second here. And at the end of the video, I will give a price prediction based on technical analysis. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, but with, with that being said, let's let's talk about the most recent news that, that we're seeing for the stock. So their CTO sold about 14,000 shares earlier this week. I don't think this matters at all. <laughs> I'm literally just covering it just because I've, I've seen some chatter saying that this is you know, a, a bad sign for the stock. I don't think so at all. Um, so, yes, he sold 14,000 shares, but he still owns a million shares. <laughs> so it, it's not like he's, he's gone bearish on the stock. It's not like he's thinking that um, you know, SoundHound AI is going to go bankrupt or anything. I'll, I'll talk about the balance sheet in a second here, but um, you know, I, I'm not worried about this stock. I, I, I really do like it long term. Um, you know, I've, I've talked about it a lot on this channel, and I've meant every single word of it. So, with that being said, let's talk about the company's long term opportunity, and I'll update you on some of the most recent partnerships for this company. So, first off, SoundHound estimates it's 2026 TAM at a massive $160 billion. Soundhound on underlying technology has a plethora of use cases ranging from its core restaurant functions to building products alongside OEMs in the Internet of Things space. The company also has cited its technology advantage vis-a-vis -vis other sound AI providers in that its technology translates speech to meaning in a single step, whereas many co competing technologies first transcri transcribe speech to text and then text to meaning. That gives SoundHound AI products a speed advantage versus its competitors. The company's also been growing at a rapid pace, so all, although we still have a very small, you know, less than 50 million annualized revenue scale, SoundHound is growing revenue rapidly over 40% year over year, which makes its relatively low valuation quite appealing for a company that is, you know, going to be much larger in the future. And then multiple routes to monetization. So SoundHound can generate product revenue from integrating its technology into hardware developers' products, as well as subscription revenue for its rights to license its AI in fast food drive throughs And then th this is especially important because right now there's a major, major labor shortage, and you know labor is just extremely expensive right now. So if these um, drive throughs can kind of save some money and, and use SoundHound AI's um, system, well, they're going to benefit a great amount from that. And then in terms of their partnerships, so SoundHound has already amassed a nice and growing roster of premier customers ranging from, ranging from Oracle, Toast, Square, Hyundai, and Jeep. A new partnership with Olo as well, um, which, which gives SoundHound the capacity to expand to many more restaurants. So SoundHound announced that major partnership with Olo um, and Olo is one of the major brands for restaurant software as a service um, businesses. The public company generates more than $200 million in annual revenue. Olo serves more than 600 well-known restaurant brands, including Denny's, P.F. Chang's, Wingstop, Five Guys, Cold Stone. Across these brands, Olo software is deployed more than 77,000 locations. And, you know, as of September, SoundHound is now part of the Olo Connect marketplace, meaning its AI features can um, be integrated with a um, restaurant on their software. So this is awesome, right? This company is garnering a ton of important partnerships, which I think will really benefit SoundHound AI in the long term. So just to give credit to this article real quick, so I got this information from Gary Alexander on seeking alpha just to give a um just to give some some credit to him so with that being said let's talk about soundhound's shareholder list and it's really non-existent so there isn't a single wall street firm that owns this stock why is that a positive well it tells you that all the moves that have been made over the past couple months have been purely retail buying or small um you know 
uh, Wall Street firms. Basically, just so you know, Wall Street firms, over $100 million, um, assets under management, they have to report their their holdings. So it's, it's likely that, that there are some smaller hedge funds out there that own the stock, but none of the big boys kind of own the stock, right? Vanguard, State Street, um, BlackRock even, they don't own the stock. And those, those passive indexers basically own every single stock within the market. So the, the fact that there isn't widespread ownership throughout Wall Street in this stock is actually a good sign because it th- this could act as a tailwind, right? So once Soundhound kind of continues to grow and um, you know gets kind of noticed throughout the marketplace, the fact that it's on the Nasdaq, it, it's publicly listed, right? This is this isn't an, an OTC stock. Um, it's it will be bought by these passive indexers. So it's gonna happen. Um, basically. All Soundhound has to do is pretty much stay alive, and these passive indexers will passively kind of roll into this stock. So, I I see um, you know in, institutional ownership and as kind of a um, upcoming catalyst for this stock. So, it's it's not within the stock right now, but that's that's a positive. So, that being said, I'll take a look at short interest quickly. So. The, the stock ranks out on Fintel as as the top 25% most likely stocks to have a short squeeze. So that definitely signals that this stock is likely to have a short squeeze. We have 14% of the float sold short, and we have 2.3 days to cover. Um, so, you know, 14% of the float sold short definitely um, signifies that a good chunk of the shares are sold short. Um, and we also have a short borrow fee rate of 7.8. For those that don't know, the short borrow fee rate basic, is basically what an investor would um, charge to actually lend out their shares to short sellers. So, you know, given we're above the average of 0.3 to 3%, that's the average short borrow fee rate is 0.3 to 3%. We're at 7.8. That signals that it's more expensive to short SoundHound AI than it is other stocks in the market, which obviously is a positive. So um, short interest is still pretty high. And de- I, I definitely do think we are, are kind of at a mild likelihood for a short squeeze, but better than, than most of the market. Like I said, we're in the you know top quarter of the market in terms of short squeeze p- potential according to Fintel. And then with that being said, let's take a look at the financials of this company. So Let's take a look at price to sales. So we have a price to sales ratio of 10 times, which is well above the sector median at 2.6. Honestly, these numbers, we, we, we don't have a positive PE, right? Um, but I think at the end of the day, this, is, this isn't a company that you would be buying for its valuation, to be frank. You're, you're buying growth, right? Um, so at the end of the day, yes, the valuation doesn't look extremely attractive. It just doesn't. Um, but this company's growing at such such a fast pace, which is really rationalizing that extremely high valuation. So over the past twelve months, we've seen revenue grow eighty four percent. So obviously, huge jump there. Love to to see that that this company is growing its revenue at an extremely high clip. And then we're also deeply profitable in 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 terms of gross profit margin. So. Let me fix that. Gross profit margin is a very attractive number. Obviously, we're not profitable right now. We're not making money with, with, with this company. But we do have a gross profit margin of 74%. For those that don't know, this is basically just revenue minus cost of goods sold. It tells you what a company makes for what it sells. Um, so to, to be at you know roughly 74% um, signals that this company is making money for everything that it sells. So all it needs to do is continue to sell more. So w- when this is negative, that would signal that they're losing money every single transaction. So just to kind of give you a- an example, let's say I own a lemonade stand and um, it cost me, um, let's say it cost me a dollar to make lemonade, but I'm selling it for a dollar and 74 cents. Well, I'm making 74 cents on every single sale, right? That's just revenue last cost of goods sold. That is basically what SoundHound AI is doing in terms of numbers. Um, just so you kind of understand what that number means. And it's, it's, it's very Im- 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 important. It's, it's the most important profitability um, metric um, for, for any, any company out there. So love to see that, that this gross profit margin is very attractive for one of my favorite stocks in the market. Um, and then let's take a look at... 
at this company's balance sheet. So we have about $115 million in cash, which is roughly 50 cents per share. So that's that, that means that about a, a quarter of this stock's market cap is just straight up in cash. So you're really only paying about $1.50 for the equity right now. Um, so we have $115 million in cash and we have $73 million in debt. That means that we have $41 million more cash than debt. So th this is a really good balance sheet. Um, you know, given the, the company size, I really do like this balance sheet. And then if we take a look at, you know, just a just another smaller cap AI company, Big Bear AI. So Big Bear has $29 million in cash and almost $200 million in debt. So we, we rank out pretty well to kind of the comparable peers here. And then with that being said, let's take a look at the chart and give a price prediction. So to be straight up, I kind of missed this chart. Um, I, I just kind of called it a smidge wrong. Um, so I, I thought we would, I, I put out basically a video pretty much updating this chart every single week on Sundays. So if you're not subbed, make sure you sub and, you know, watch that video if you're interested. But I thought that this 180 or excuse me, that this $1.83 level would hold, as this is where shares had bottomed in August, and um, it's where we found some consolidation in fe February as well. It's also where we topped out in December. So I thought this $1.83 level would hold, given it, it's acted as support in the past. Unfortunately, it broke, and we saw a move down to support at about $1.60, which is where shares had bottomed in March. So yeah, I was wrong by about 20 cents, but still kind of right because we, we obviously have rebounded pretty um, drastically in the past three days. Um, so humble in that definitely kind of uh, swung and missed on the exact price, but we, we definitely did get a trend re reversal at least. Um, honestly, th this is kind of a harder chart to call because my heart, <laughs> my gut tells me that this stock is going to rocket higher. Um, long term, I, I'm very confident on this stock, but unfortunately, the chart is reading um, that we could see some uh, pullbacks within the next couple of days. So, the 50-day moving average crossed below the 200-day moving average on September 20th. For those that don't know, that's referred to as a um, death cross, and it kind of sounds like it. It, it kind of is like what it sounds like um so it's it's a signal of bearish momentum it's really the most widely watched indicator for daily moving averages um so this obviously isn't a great sign for the company but like i said you know long term i, I don't think it'll be such a huge deal um but just just kind of making this point for the short-term traders here so we do have the 200 i mean excuse me, we do have the 50-day moving average at about two two dollars and 25 cents I think we could, we could see some consolidation around that level, um, maybe some sideways trading um, for the stock. So I think we move up to 225, um, possibly in the next couple trading days, and then we, we see some consolidation around that level. Um, I, I, I don't think, obviously, the stock's going to zero or anything. Um, I, I, I love it long term, uh, but it, it is worth noting that, you know, based on the chart, it does look like we will top out around two dollars and 25 cents in the short term long term you know i i could see us coming back up to test this resistance level at about five dollars and seven cents which is where shares had topped out in february it's also where shares had topped out in june so that's kind of my longer term price target is you know we, we see a move up to this five dollar level roughly um as this has acted as a major resistance in the past also acted as resistance in june of last year so that's kind of what i'm seeing for this stock um you know when, when we look a little farther out i'll extend this you know maybe, maybe by year's end we could see that five dollar price target um you know kind of pan out um but you know that's just technicals that's just this chart right this this chart is just a function of supply and demand for the stock um so at the end of the day it's it's a stock price is always disconnected from the fundamentals of, of a company somewhat, and the fundamentals of, of a company long term are definitely what drives a stock price. But day to day, it's it's really just supply and 
demand general market dynamics. Obviously, the market has fallen over the past couple of weeks, and that's really the main reason why SoundHound has dropped. We, we've we seen uh, C3 AI drop a lot too, so that's really been kind of bringing down the smaller AI players as well. So I think that's really the reason why the stock has fallen. It, it's really just general market dynamics. It's not anything that, 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 that the company has done. It, really, SoundHound AI's business has never been stronger, which leads me to believe that this company is a major major um, long-term opportunity with, within the AI space. So I'm very bullish this stock. It's one of my favorites throughout the market. Um, let me know what, what you think about shares below. If there's something you would like me to cover about SoundHound in my next video, definitely let me know I'll, and, and I'll definitely do that. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will end it there. If you got some value from this video, please leave a like. We post company breakdowns and important market moving news on this channel on a daily basis, so make sure you are subscribed. If you would like to receive my daily portfolio moves, my exits, my entries, and see how me and my team of analysts are trading the markets, join the Discord through the link in the description below to get our free 7-day trial. Also, if you would like to join our free daily newsletter, sign up to our Substack, which is linked below as well. With that being said, good luck, everyone. Happy trading. Happy investing.